Hearty welcome to you, Professor Muthukrishnan, and uh, it is uh, an honor and pleasure to uh, engage with you in a conversation in the free format. Uh, you have been associated with the institute uh, for a very long time, and uh, almost from the inception of the institute uh, till it has matured into an advanced uh, uh, stages of the uh, institute, you have been associated in various capacities. Let's uh, begin at the beginning as the sure, sayings go. Sure. So, uh, can you please uh, highlight yeah. uh, some of the experiences yeah. from your student days? Yeah, I, I joined the BTEC program in IIT Madras that, uh, in 1960, uh, second batch. Second batch. But we were the first batch to live on campus. Okay. From day one, I moved to the hostel. My previous batch, the first batch, they lived in teacher's hostel in Saidapet. And uh, first I think it was a Krishna hostel. Then after a semester or maybe a year, we moved to the Kaveri hostel. There were two students in a room. But later we got single room in Kaveri hostel. Uh, the campus used to be totally green. The BSB, Building Science Block, was the first building to come up. Uh, and uh, all the classes used to be there. Uh, in fact, first semester, I think the classes used to be in the AC College, workshop in the AC College, or some of the classes will also be in the highways department across the road. And uh, the first year in the, uh, of my BTEC, uh, we used to have a military truck make three trips in the morning, three trips for lunch, three trips in the afternoon and three trips back in the evening. Amazing. So we used to get into one of those trips, we were about 100 students, uh, go to the uh, venue where classes or workshop is held and once we come back in the evening, we left alone in the campus, uh, no street lights, the Delhi and Bonn avenues were there. I think the the one which is in Vanavani, that's called what? Uh, Madras Avenue. No, no, no. The, the one behind? Uh, no, no, no. no. The... Where Vanavani is uh, located. Vanavani From is... KV to outside. That is Bonn Avenue. Avenue. That is Bonn Avenue. Yeah. Bonn Avenue was uh, uh, red, red uh, sand road. Oh, red sand and, road. And uh, most of us used to have a bike cycle. Uh, and when we used to go at night, uh, cycle up to the gate and come back, uh, especially on uh, the uh, uh, new moon, around the new moon, new moon time, we could see the starry sky, beautiful. A lot of deer, snakes. Uh, I don't know where the faculty lived at that time, but the faculty houses were not really fully ready. Maybe some faculty lived on campus. Uh, then I think uh, maybe a couple of years later, the uh, 62 or so, the OAT was uh, ready. And uh, I think just about the year I left, 1964 or something like that, the admin building was ready. Uh, ESB was ready before that, electrical science block. and. Uh, and uh, teachers, uh, I remember Professor Shankaran used to teach us building materials. Then one Professor R. K. Gupta, who taught us management science. Professor N. V. C. Swami taught me fluid mechanics. There are quite a few German teachers at that time. Yeah, that's right. uh, Koch, who used to teach uh, physics, and Professor Hahn, mathematics. So remember Professor Srivastava, who was our warden, mathematics professor. Those are terrific days. Amazing right? days, amazing days. <laughs> amazing so days, we, yeah. we used to have uh, some German quarters by the name. So the faculty, the German faculty members, were they living here at that time? Or? No, that uh, I think the that street of uh, Lakeview Road. Lakeview Road the and also quarter. the German street. I think type. they were they were all ready only in 1966. I think oh, I'm not maybe sure. Later, yeah, much later. I left by January, March of 65. 65. Yeah. 
so uh, you are also been uh, often cited and credited as the first PhD student of computer science in India. He worked with uh, Professor Raja Raman in uh, uh, IIT Kanpur. Uh, did you go immediately after your yeah, undergraduation? After I, I graduated in 1965. Uh, actually, our program was accelerated because of the Chinese war. Mm -hmm. I remember Professor Nantaraman, uh, who used to teach us economics, uh, from Velu Swami, so many other Professor VGK Murthy. So we missed, I think, two summers fully. I don't remember which year, probably 62 and 63. We had uh, hardly a summer break. Uh, and uh, I think Professor Sengupto, the then director, made sure that not even one day of academic work was taken away for this acceleration. <coughs> Graduated in April, uh, in uh, finished all the requirements in January 1965. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the project viva was on January 11th. Wow. Such a detail. <laughs> Amazing. Then I took time off. I was in, uh, uh, I went home in Mylapur. I was living with my grandparents. Then uh, June or July of that year, I went to IIT Kanpur to mm -hmm. join the master's program. Okay. So uh, then you did your PhD Yeah, I did also. my master's. I did my uh, PhD there. I did have an option to go abroad to do my PhD, but uh, some interesting thing happened in, in Kanpur, there were many German and many professors from US, US universities, but it used to be called KIAP, Kanpur Indo-American Program. Uh, so there's one professor, Van Hess from MIT, communications professor. and. There was a faculty member, later we became good uh, friends, a senior colleague of mine, was a K.R. Sharma. Under KF faculty used to go and spend some time in U U.S. universities. U.S. universities. And like uh, IIT Madras faculty used to visit Germany. Germany, yeah. And K.R. Sharma was, uh, went to MIT, spent about nine months, uh, and he wanted to um, meet and discuss with Professor Van Hess at MIT. During the nine months, he couldn't meet him even once. Oh, so he easy. came back to Kanpur, and and he could have all the time he wanted with Van Hess. <laughs> Van Hess was visiting back at that That's time. Right. So I decided to stay uh, at at uh, Kanpur for my PhD. There were several professors uh, with whom I took courses. Uh, at that time, computer science was very uh, nascent. nascent. Uh, it used to be partly in electrical engineering, partly in mathematics, numerical computing, and so on. Uh, I had professors like Foreman Acton from Princeton, William Schreiber from MIT, uh, several of them. I think. Uh, Arthur Burks from uh, University of Michigan, who mm -hmm. edited Von Neumann's work. That's right. So I had the opportunity of uh, attending classes with them, and that's got me switched to computer science very soon. Uh, so I, I, I stayed on there and did my PhD. Professor Rajaraman was my yeah. thesis advisor. And I probably am. Uh, Maybe uh, Dr. Ramani from TAFR might have been a few months ahead of me, I don't know, but mm -hmm. he was one of the first to work on, uh, to do PhD in a topic from the field of computer. Computer science as such. Yeah, at that time. But from various quarters, I used to hear that uh, you are the first PhD, so I took the liberty to <laughs> <laughs> state that maybe in a matter of months time here and there, but uh, definitely among the zeroth generation of uh, yeah. PhD in computer science, uh, took the responsibility of building the area of computer science in India, who stayed here and then uh, built the area. Yeah. So I remember after my, uh, yeah. Raja Raman uh, in the uh, east, uh, E. V. Krishnamurti in uh, uh, south, Narasimhan uh, in the west, 
and uh, in uh, delhi also there was another uh, person this was one datta mazumdar in calcutta yes mm -hmm. and these were the people who kind of uh, pioneers yeah. pioneers and then uh, your association with raja raman was uh, uh, spoken uh, so well in various forums in any computer science forum if you see that the names uh, of the first generation people and so after phd uh, after phd i joined and at kanpur as a assistant professor worked for about 2 years or so uh, we were a very small number of faculty i think we also started a mtech program in computer science in addition to mtech in electrical engineering at that time uh, my one of my thesis examiner was uh, harry husky Mm -hmm. who passed away about a couple of years ago uh, he was editor in chief of uh, ieee transactions on computers and so on i spent a lot of time with him because he was also visiting kanpur uh, other examiner was professor narsimha yes tf so and seven see the, the the thing that made a difference to me the program here was very good uh, we learned good amount of mathematics physics uh, many engineering subjects uh, fairly advanced i should say uh, but i missed uh, in the curriculum at that time uh, digital Uh, electronics and digital computer uh, digital uh, logic, logic and so on completely um, and kanpur had a mainframe computer at that time uh, i think it was an ibm computer probably the same that was uh, in use at mit in mm -hmm. cambridge oh. so that made a big difference you know and uh, we were a bunch of 20 30 students who used to spend a lot of time <laughs> on the computers and so on and yes, yes it's a privilege so, yeah. to yeah so then in 73 it was a mahabala who was also my teacher uh, he he was associated with establishing a computer facility in iit madras because ramchandran was a director who later went to Uh, Delhi as first secretary of the Department of Science and Technology. Illustrious son of Hail Mudaliar, who was our chairman of Board of Governors. So, uh, so they were getting an IBM computer here, which was uh, considerably advanced compared to the IBM mainframe computer we had in IIT Kanpur. So that was the attraction. So I moved here. as uh, assistant professor in 1973, 1973. was sampat interviewed me uh, and i was very happy to come here as a faculty member uh, in between one interesting th thing happened in iit kanpur there was one professor subaro mm -hmm. who later moved to tata research a material science professor well known so he was dean of industrial consultancy and he more or less uh, took me by my arm and said you should spend a summer in industry so i went to uh, tcs it was just started uh, mr kohli who moved from tata electric was the uh, director of uh, tcs and uh, he was already at that time 55 or 50, 56 something like that i was just about 27 28 and uh, i found the work interesting so one afternoon i was discussing with him when he said i i told him i think i like to join tcs quit iit kanpur and so on he said no you you have to go back to academy because we need a uh, large number of people in the field mm -hmm. he was a visionary he saw the potential of uh, computers particularly uh, software as a major force uh, as a commercial com yeah technology area so he said you go back to iit and teach and we need many students to come look at so, so i took the advice seriously <laughs> 
then switch to IIT Madras. Madras. Okay. So, uh, it's very interesting that uh, one of the pioneers had the vision to direct people back to mm. uh, academics rather than holding on to them for their own uh, specific interest and then uh, uh, so, uh, when you came here, uh, I, I'm sure the situation was in a very humble status in the sense it was about to start and Mahabala might have just set up the uh, computing, computing facility, facilities yeah. and so on. So, how were the initial days and then how you were? Oh, initial to... days were very interesting, you know. We used to be in, see, uh, I, I think Mahabala also was uh, uh, very particular that there must be an academic program sent uh, along with the computing facility, uh, academic program in computer science. So very early days because uh, people could learn computing but without doing anything in computer science per se. They could use computers in other branches of engineering and so on. So he was, I think, uh, he convinced uh, Professor Ramchandran and then Professor Sampat to start the MTech program in computer science at IIT Madras in 1973, first batch. Uh, if that was not there, I probably wouldn't have moved here. Because mm. we were not looking for a position uh, outside of the being a faculty. And uh, so the uh, MTech program in computer science, which we started here in that time, it was not in a department, it was part of the computer the center. center. Right. Uh, we used to admit students from all branches of engineering and also some MSCs in mathematics, statistics and so on. Uh, because they were very early days, so we, at being at the postgraduate level, we had to take students from various branches. Also, there were no undergraduate program no in undergraduate computer science program. per se. Yeah. So, we have to take the inputs from a variety yeah. of... Uh, so, and uh, the computer facility was located in the building science block. Uh, apparently, that space had to be released by civil engineering department. And what I've heard from Professor Mahabala and Professor Sampath is that it was uh, Professor Vargis, who was a stalwart in civil engineering, uh, could be persuaded by Professor A. Ramachandran to release that space. <laughs> and we we got very little space at that time. BSB didn't have the uh, the, the wing on the rear side. Rear side, yeah. Uh, so we didn't have enough desks for faculty. So I remember I used to live in Mylapur. I didn't move. Uh, yeah, I, I used to live in Mylapur. I used to drive with my uncle's car, a Fiat. Uh, park the car under the tree sit in the car in the shade for a while and when my class <laughs> used to come I used to go up and go directly to the class. I think Tulasi Raman, myself, we all shared desk, you know, one desk and uh, so yeah, we used to go into sweet. the class teach and then you know uh, first floor in the computer facility there were a few desks again so it was more or less like uh, uh, a lounge where you would <laughs> Go right. and sit and work. And the classrooms are all part of civil engineering. Mm -hmm. They were kind enough to accommodate us at that time. Yeah. Sir, one thing is that uh, when uh, after this kind of a description, that's uh, when I joined in 1982 here as a lecturer. And um, the moment I walked in in the computer center, there was a really scary scene. Um, <laughs> police with gun <laughs> protecting the entrance and uh, what not. Probably it was uh, handling the uh, confidential records from the investigation uh, department or Tamil Nadu no, that, police. Yeah. Or, but then ours was protected not by our internal security. <laughs> the formal police with uh, yeah. guns they used to protect. But yeah. uh, the reputation is uh, not only uh, our computer facilities being used by police department. Lot of industries mm. used to uh, use mm. our computer center and uh, especially during your uh, period as uh, head of the computer center, the industry reach of the computer center was uh, 
spoken so widely and so well all over can you elaborate a bit yeah. on the way in which you have strategized that uh, spread yeah. and uh, i think it was a uh, it was a, a policy it was a policy decision as part of uh, establishing that uh, ibm mainframe facility which cost us probably about 1 uh, and 1/2 crores of rupees which is big money in those days in talking about 1973 72 as part of the policy we had a commitment to share uh, this facility with uh, with other organizations including industry other organizations uh, because at that time these facilities were very expensive and uh, they had to be completely imported and i think the government policy was that there must be a tight control on import uh, and so on there was a lot of emphasis on self reliance but we didn't have the full full range of technology to build these computers there were some attempts to build computers in india at tafr and in uh, jadavpur yes, kolkata isi and so on uh, but we were lagging behind uh, so we uh, so we used to provide time on this computer it was a closed shop which means people have to submit their programs and data they can't uh, interactively use the computer and they have to uh, wait till we schedule this program to run on the computer and come back and collect the results by way of printouts and so on the punched card and the deck of card yeah. submission kind of uh, thing we don't have an online uh, yeah. computing many organizations uh, this was one of the best facilities at that time mm-hmm. uh, for a few years so many organizations used to come here uh, i remember for example bhel department of space air india national remote sensing agency uh, to name a few in fact from department of space for the euro used to come himself okay who later became our chairman he became chairman of uh, isro uh, secretary to government uh, department of space and so on and um, uh, it was um, because i think most of them used fortran for engineering applications that is the main thing and uh, some of them used to have special requirement like uh, national remote sensing agency they used to bring volumes of data on tape and they they need to get it processed and they used to take the whatever results or output also on tape and later print mm. it and so on one of these applications was for the fingerprint bureau of tamil nadu they used to put fingerprints of uh, uh, fingerprint database along with modus operandi and then they used to bring data from crime scenes coded and search this and extract that is the what you are referring to <laughs> <laughs> so they used to bring trunks of data <laughs> and of course policemen in uniform yes. come there Police and start around and so the entrance of <laughs> it was very tough managing because our faculty also were uh, quite a few of them were uh, very heavily engaged in research which required computing Uh, access to computing and so on so there used to be quite a bit of tension in scheduling because people used to find that their program has a small error and that they are back in the queue to submit for the next day and so on uh, it was a uh, uh, but we used to run the computers 24 hours a day i remember one week uh, 1978 probably in one week that uh, facility ran non stop for 724 into 7 168 hours Straight. non-stop wow. <laughs> wow. that was a record so and we had uninterrupted power and then yeah. the hardware and everything yeah. was uh, that part was quite quite a bit of fun but i think my passion and love was in teaching teaching okay and so. uh, i used to enjoy teaching those batches and those uh, students used to uh, get jobs mostly from TCS and a few other company like Putney and so on. Right. Uh, so Mr. Kohli used to come here and used to hand out hand over. We didn't have a placement at that time. Hand over offer letters to all our graduating students. Students. <laughs> all of them, the entire group will go off to Bombay and settle down. It happened for first four or five batches, I think. 
Then more more companies, it, it, right. it got diversified. Yeah, could you uh, say some special word on the, uh, some of the students uh, who have uh, become illustrious in the later days, like Chris Gopalakrishnan and, and uh, yeah. one or two of them, as uh, because you have touched upon teaching as your passion, yeah. and as you have said in those days with no placement, nothing, and things were all uh, happening, but then. They have all become a part of the history now and they have evolved to a mm. great stature at this point. I, in those I, days, yeah. the first few batches, any thing you remember? I think I remember uh, Divakar Nigam from second batch. Uh, I, he probably had a job with DCM uh, data products for a few months and then he started his own company called Softtech. And he took a couple of other classmates also. Uh, Bharadarajan. Uh, Koti Reddy, yeah. and uh, he later became very successful and I think his company recently has, be, has, uh, uh, has uh, entered into the IPO, initial stock offering and so on. Uh, it grew slowly but it's a very solid company. Very solid company. Then of course Chris Gopal Christian, he did MSc Physics and joined us here. That's right, MTech. He yeah, MTech, and uh, he joined Patni, and very soon a group from Patni with Narayan Murthy and others they moved and started their own company. He was one of the founders. Yes. Incidentally, Narayan Murthy was in my class in IIT Kanpur. Kanpur. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so, so you have there used to be only about five, six be uh, rows of benches. I, I think he used to be in the last but one bench. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Later, I think when he made a big donation and Kanpur set up a computer science block, I was invited 2001, I think, for the inauguration. So I went and I sat in the last but one row. Narayan Murthy commented, I used to be in the last but one row, you were in the first row, now it's changed. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, yeah. Very interesting, so, very fascinating. That, uh, yeah, but there were, uh, yes. Correct. In New Science, I had a 360-44 as they used to call it. It was much smaller and uh, uh, speed-wise, capacity-wise. And uh, one Mr. Shami was uh, in charge. And I think they realized that that was a... You see, you see I think it is from the Ramchandran who could sort of uh, uh, prevail upon Swing the government yeah. authorities to... Uh, to approve this large investment and large computer import for IIT Madras. Uh, it, it was an inflection point which made a big difference, yeah. We used to, you know, the policy also allowed us to charge for the computing time. Uh, so the idea was that the op running expenses would be met from that. So Ramachandran had moved out soon after that to Delhi and uh, for a short while Professor Sampath was there and Professor Mahabala took charge and after that I became the head of the computer center. Professor Pandale was a director. I had also become a professor two years after I joined here as a faculty. And uh, the government was uh, unreasonable. I don't know, they had a policy that the money earned from the computer services provided to other organizations, they were all highly respectable organizations. We... Like you said, ISRO, NA, yeah. and... Uh, and uh, but that was not uh, allowed to be used internally here. It used to be adjusted in the budget provision. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is the policy and uh, we could not make much headway with government on that point at that time. And I remember much later in 92 when I had become a dean, I think Professor Swami was the director, when we see Swami. Was, uh, Mr. Manmohan Singh was the finance minister, minister. along with Narasimha Rao. You know, we went through this foreign exchange crisis and so on. So Manmohan Singh through MHRD, I remember who was the minister at uh, HRD at that time? Probably SR Bombay, I don't remember. 
they came up with the policy that if we earn out of consultancy and other activities for every uh, rupee we earn they will match it with a rupee okay and it did work for about 2 years after which uh, that policy was it died a natural death or quietly shelved so i i i looking back i remember between uh, mid 70s and mid 90s in two decades how the government started viewing iits yeah uh, but later also again i think when uh, mr murli manohar joshi became the minister for hrd he used to take the view that we are all government institutions we will fund you don't worry about earning money hmm. in fact if the, with iim it was a very strong position it took and some of you might have read it in the news at that time so i think it is true that the governments the government the government of india wanted to uh, be very quote and quote possessive about iits because they were becoming visibly successful i remember in uh, uh, i think when mr joshi was the minister uh, probably it was the vajpayee government mm-hmm. i don't remember i attended a meeting of uh, alumni at iit delhi international alumni they had sought a meeting with the minister, minister. Okay. he did come Uh, the secretary spent longer time secretary mhrd and uh, i think the uh, i don't remember the prominent uh, kanwal reki is also very well known like our guru guru raj desh pandey right one of the early alumni who wanted to support church, actually, by yeah. large donations and so on he was present at that meeting and It became very clear that the government was uh, somewhat concerned that the alumni may even take over the institute. <laughs> <laughs> That was a big development, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. coming back to the computer science program, I think you know we did run the MTech program very successfully for about uh, first batch came out in seventy five. Seventy five. Okay. And, uh, I think 82 we started the uh, B Tech program. program. You were here that by that time. That is when I. Uh, you were here by that uh, time. Yeah. When the undergraduate program started, uh, the first recruitment drive uh, in the interview, I just joined and then uh, yes. was fortunate yeah. enough to get associated with this department from the beginning of their UG program, uh, 82. Anyway, by that time, you know, I was head of the computer center. The department had not been established. Uh, uh, or constituted by the government there is a fairly complex procedure uh, to start a new department in iit maybe it's become simpler now uh, i was told that it was because the budget for iit is you in the formula they used to figure number of departments used to be a parameter in that yeah <laughs> something like that Uh, so i realized that you know this close shop batch computing is not the way to uh, develop computer science in particular or even computing for other engineering faculty and so on in the campus so pro indresan had come in by the time 1979 uh, so i could persuade him and he was also uh, magnanimous and generous enough to take uh, our view and he supported in getting a what we call a time sharing interactively usable computer not a closed shop but open access right uh, it's like the difference between waiting for a bus to get in and then move along the fixed route we service uh, a transport at your disposal yeah pick up and drop can be self driven what do you want and that made a big difference i i did buy uh, import a uh, time sharing computer with small number of users i think it it could support about 10 or 12 users not more than that uh, called prime computer i did look at another option from digital equipment corporation okay. wax but it was beyond our budget what uh, pros indresan could provide and the import of prime was uh, 
uh, I didn't bend rules. <laughs> what I did is that the government had a policy at that time to get a prior clearance for import of computers, which I did not do. I got the computer under uh, multiple orders in some way and assembled here and so on. Later, of course, one Mr. Oberoi who became a friend of mine, an officer from the Department of Electronics, came to IIT and went back and wrote a report saying they have this computer and so on. So we initiated a procedure thanks to Professor Mahabala and uh, they ratified it. Ratified. Uh, otherwise I might have been put in jail, I don't no, know. No, 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 of course not. I don't, it's and that made a big difference too. Computing science, because I, even though we were a computer center, I more or less uh, uh, took a mother treatment with respect to computer science and made this facility primarily for computer science program. Right. I think right. you had joined by that time. Yeah, yes, Frank was but there. Raghavan was also later. There. S. V. Raghavan did his entire PhD, PhD work on, on this, Frank, uh, on the uh, prime computer. And, uh, uh, to locate the prime computer, we didn't have space. It obviously could not be part of the mainframe because mainframe is a closed access, you know. People can't go and sit in and work and so on. So what I did was there was a beautiful conference room that was uh, set up in the computer center, second floor BSB. Uh, I think it probably was set up in 1976 or something like that and it used to be used widely. It was more or less a campus facility. Uh, I remember Professor Ramani from management. Uh, he had some connections and uh, he used to bring uh, Mr. Mahalingam, well-known industrialist from Porlachi for uh, some draw for a prize winner on some bank scheme, some deposit scheme, something like that. And they wanted to ensure that this draw would be completely objective, so on. So it was done on the computer. That's right. The computer used to be locked for about 20 minutes at that time. And that meeting, every month or so, that uh, draw would happen. It will happen in that conference, in the conference room. room. So I told Professor Indresen that I'm informing you, sir, that I'm going to take the carpet and the furniture away somewhere else and use this for my prime computer. <laughs> And he said, I have not heard anything from you. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that. So, you know, those days funds were short. We were not... Uh, I know. Uh, Even enabling something is such a challenge and difficult. Yeah. In order to help the system, you have to beat the system. Was but uh, one interesting thing is, situation. Yes. Professor Narasimhan visited us at that time. He saw the prime computer. He got convinced that it was a very good facility. And of course, he, he had uh, Professor M. G. K. Menon, who was the first uh, secretary, Department of Electronics, which had the policy about imports and so on. Uh, they were colleagues, so he could convince uh, you know Department of Electronics. He got the prime computer at the TAFR Center in Bangalore, ISC Bangalore. Yeah. <laughs> so I told Mr. Oberoi, see, they are also taking this. It's a good facility we have established. And Very I think true. Professor Mahabala persuaded the government to ratify it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That made a big difference. I want to know if there is uh, any one of those punch card machines still available? No. No. The entire IBM, IBM, that space has been cleared and uh, now that is given back to uh, civil engineering. And the museum place will keep on. No. I, I think worldwide punch card equipment has gone out. It's, it used to be called Hollerith machine, uh, named after Herman Hollerith. Uh, it was not actually used for uh, su submitting programs and data to the computer. It was used with mechanical compu computer-like machines for accounting purposes. Uh, the first use of it was in the census uh, in the late... 1800s in the US, I think. Was it used in the World War? Yeah, paper tape was more popular. Yeah. Paper tape. Uh, uh, Compact. Uh, 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 I mean, auto for five months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
somewhere he has mentioned that he has employed a number of uh, ladies yeah. to come That's to right. the war. That's right. Yeah. And then he used yeah. to take each person, yeah. each lady will only type one thing yeah. and then moves. Yeah. I, 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 that's right. Yeah. Second war, they used to calculate what are called the firing tables. Uh, you no, know, because the I think the Germans were using aircrafts, and <laughs> uh, so they had to uh, shoot them down. <clears throat> so this firing table calculation was done by a computer, and they used to employ uh, dozens and dozens of clerks to run these and so on. That's about history of computing. I think itihasa. That's right. Has, uh, itihasa that. has, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, so uh, with the arrival of the undergraduation, we may probably say that the uh, a clear mark of the beginning of the next generation, and uh, uh, then a new kind of energy started flowing into the yeah. department system, recruitment, faculty, and uh, everything was uh, uh, going on, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so at the time, that is when uh, uh, our department, 1982 is when uh, the undergraduate program started and then... Uh, uh, I had taken a sabbatical at that time mm -hmm. and came back here in 1983, Three. Uh, yes. some summer. Okay. I handed over charge to Professor Kalyanakrishnan. Yes. In, uh, and then he continued as a head uh, after that? Uh, no, when Kalyan I came back, I just came back to the department as a professor. Right. Immersed myself in B, teaching BTEC program, which had started by that time, and uh, those were delightful days. You know, we used to get uh, very bright, extraordinarily bright students. I remember one year when the entire admission to BTEC Computer Science closed uh, before 100, rank 100 in JEE, right in Madras. Every Amazing. one of our students in the class Gem. was rank. Double digit rank, 99 or below. Amazing. Uh, extraordinarily bright stories. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So, and then uh, uh, your phase, uh, the third phase, yeah. uh, began with uh, your uh, becoming a cultural secretary and also the alumni. See, today the alumni association is not only active, they are contributing in a substantial way for the development of uh, the facilities in the department, they participate in supporting the students and all. You were involved in the starting of that uh, process. Can you yeah. tell us how it all? I I, I had a I had a little bit to do with alumni activities even in the mid 70s and so on. Also a little bit in the 80s. One Mr. Sridhar, son of uh, Professor Ramanuja, I am not sure. He used to bring out this alumni newsletter. Uh, it, it used to be late and it was not at the, uh, at the periodic, uh, uh, you know, plan that was to be followed and so on. It used to be good. He used mm -hmm. to take a lot of pains to get uh, small articles and so on whenever it came to his good. But we just didn't have the technology to follow with alumni at that time. Most of our alumni had, were in the U.S. and other countries. Few were here, quite a few were here. So there used to be an alumni association, some activity, but we didn't even have a good uh, address database, contact database. Uh, then I think it is to the credit of uh, Professor Swami, who felt that we should get started with alumni activity seriously. Um, so he supported us to uh, host the first alumni reunion event mm -hmm. in 92, 92, 93, I don't know. So it used to be called Silver Reunion, 25 years. So first three batches we came up together. Uh, we did make a good effort to also include uh, postgraduate alumni at that time. Uh, so, there were some uh, programs and so on, a lot of uh, walking down the memory lane, that kind of stuff. And uh, we used to, we started this uh, tree planting by alumni. I think now it should be all over the campus. It is. I think the 65 batch is probably in front of the BSB, I think. Yeah. I'm not sure that 
plaque may be yes, there. Yes, the cement. Uh, yeah. And this was named Alumni Avenue at that time. It was in the afternoon, about 2 o'clock, there were a dozen people. And uh, I don't remember a few of us who were there. Uh, I think our engineering unit brought a plant. We put it there and put some water and so on. <laughs> and I also saw that uh, the uh, street name board would uh, read Alumni Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. That was 93 probably. Mm -hmm. 92, mm -hmm. 92. Uh, and then you were uh, uh, in uh, Dean's position uh, over here, yeah. Dean Academic Courses. That's right, for uh, three that's years. Where, yeah. uh, uh, for six years. Because initially for two years, then I, I got extended by one more year. It was uh, May of uh, 1995. For the Swami was uh, keen that I should continue because I think he, his, his own term as director was going to be coming to coming to a close probably by end of that year, November 95, something like that. Uh, but I had found out that he had identified Prasanant as the next dean. So I, I think even Professor Swami got the information later on. First of May, I just handed over Charles Turnant and walked off. <laughs> 1995. Uh, so that was uh, still then. Uh, in between, another interesting happened, of which I, Professor Kalyana Krishnan handled most of it. I was part of that in some way. We did realize by late uh, 70s, 1980, that the IBM mainframe is uh, outlived its uh, life productive life, not as uh, equipment in good working condition, but as uh, uh, technology. And uh, the world was moving much faster. Indian Institute of Science and IIT Kanpur had got uh, what are called time sharing system where all users can use it interactively. When I say all, it can support something like uh, 100 users, 100 plus users at the same time. People didn't have to carry decks of cards or look at uh, bulky printed outputs and so on. Um, so we also had to move in that direction. And uh, I think for Srinath was the director, we had this uh, uh, 25 years of German collaboration. The function was held in SAC. Many German professors had visited the institute at that time. Professors who were there in the earlier days and so on. Professor Wagner had come particularly. And I think we could, uh, they showed interest, we could uh, get support for the, uh, I don't know, the next phase of Indo German project to support a new large capacity computing facility. And they were keen to uh, that we take. Uh, technology, a product produced from Germany, that is of Siemens. So Kalyan Krishnan was in charge of it as head of computer center, but he did send me on a visit to Germany for a week or so to look at uh, what should be the computer and so on. And later their team came here. Uh, it was a uh, Haupt from Aachen. Yes. It was from the academic side and the Siemens people had come. So we did switch to the Siemens computer probably when uh, by that time when Nagarajan probably had uh, taken charge. The building was also put up, the, what is called the computer science block. Uh, so the yeah, yeah. No, the at the time, uh, uh, Professor Eginarayana took over. Eginarayana. Eginarayana correct, was correct. there. Correct, uh, So uh, you're right, he yeah. who was uh, handling that Siemens. Uh, yeah. Uh, but okay. personally, somehow I, I was uh, personally I was not very convinced that that was the uh, best choice for our institution. Maybe. And also, people I remember struggling with the German manual uh, written in the German language, which the local people have hard time in deciphering, and then getting the help from the user manual. Yeah. They took a lot of effort to get finally an English version of the uh, manual and. Uh, 
I remember the. In fact, I remember when the uh, Siemens computer configuration was being finalized. We had the meeting in one of the rooms in BSB. Uh, I did make a strong pitch for a time sharing uh, uh, Unix machine. Mm -hmm. So they did add it to that whole configuration. It's called Sinix machine, I think they had. And so those terminals had to be distributed into the campus. Uh, because people can't, uh, the idea that one should go to a specified physical location to use it like saying, you know, if you want to make a telephone call, you have to go to the telephone exchange. That was obsolete. So we, di we did have a plan to locate computers in various buildings and labs and so on. And that required some networking. It got done late. It didn't get done on day one when Siemens was uh, commissioned. At the time Siemens was commissioned, the terminals were in the computer center, new computer center building, computer science block. Mm -hmm. uh, and later, uh, I think a few years later, uh, some networking, BSNL networking was done and so on. Uh, in fact, I remember Professor Swami called me. You'd also remember, he said that uh, this was uh, 1992, something like that. I was dean 93. So he said, I want you to take charge of the computer center additionally. I said, sir, I've already been there for a few years. He said, no, there's a task to be completed. We must phase out Siemens and get a modern system there. That was a task given to me. I don't know how several of my colleagues in the institution felt because, you know, I did hold two positions. In addition to being a professor in computer science and dean of academic courses, I was also head of the computer center for a second time, but only three years. So I took that responsibility for the uh, director's um, uh, you know, the task he assigned to me seriously. And uh, within about a year, we did get, get uh, we got a new, again, IBM, cluster computer, a very special architecture with a hundred plus terminals. We couldn't distribute the terminals because that required networking. The budget was not there at that time. So we had commissioned a new computer facility. And I think this computer facility did to the campus what Prime Computer did to the computer science department. Uh, so in some way, you know, I think my uh, work here as a professor has also been complementarily tied up with uh, computer facilities for uh, institute and campus use. Yeah. At a so, later stage also when you were a deputy director, the campus-wide uh, network. networking and the hostel uh, computing. Yeah, the networking uh, initiative yeah. we took up. Uh, so in 95, 95, I handed over to Prozanant. I had a brief, uh, I don't know, six months of really enjoyable time with my family, everybody. Uh, then uh, 90, 95 end, I think Professor Natarajan became the director. Professor M.S. Swaminathan was the member, uh, chairman of the board. So I think uh, Professor Swaminathan probably convinced Professor Natarajan that he should appoint a deputy director. And I was called in to take charge and uh, I was in two minds, but I said, in fact, interestingly, Professor Indres in 1984 asked me whether I would be a dean. I said, no, sir. I want to be a professor for at least another five, six years. And he respected my uh, wish. That's yeah, right. wish. In 92, I became a dean after Professor Kuparajulu. Um, very interestingly, I think when Professor Pandale was a director here, we didn't really have the concept of dean well established in the institute. We did have something, but I remember 1973 when we started Industrial Consultancy Center in BSB, Professor Venkatesh used to, was the first dean, I think, VC Venkatesh of mechanical. Uh, he was very admired for his work in uh, Metrology, I don't remember machine the tools. machine tools. Yeah. He later went to Singapore and so on. 
at that time they all used to be called provision in charge. You know, I, of course, we were a small institute at that time. We were what, uh, maybe about uh, 150 students admission every year. So mm. all the four years put together is 600 plus maybe a few hundred PGs. So we were just a thousand plus in terms of student size in the campus. So I think senior people whose contributions, uh, whose efforts were required for development of the institute, it used to be only professor in charge and so on. But later, I think it was Indurasan when he took charge after Professor EGR was officiating for about uh, eight, nine months, I think. He established the system. He brought the credit system to the institute. Earlier, I think the curriculum was not really mapped to the credit system. It was all uh, uh, curriculum list and number of papers, pass and so on. When I was a student here, it used to be an annual system, not even a semester system. Semester system, oh, okay. So we used to carry 13, 14 subjects for a full year. First term, second term, final, at the end of third term. So uh, in the final examination, we had to write something like 13, 14 papers. <laughs> My God, that's <laughs> so a really tortuous long thing at that time. Yeah. Uh, engagement uh, with examination. So in this, an interview, and he also introduced the deanship. Uh, he made these four or five deans, industrial consultancy, academic courses, research, uh, students, dean of students and so on. And well, later, I think dean planning was introduced in a big way. Now dean international alumni, international and alumni relations and so on. See, to the external world, it makes a difference because they see a single touch point with the institute. That's right. Uh, otherwise, it's sort of amorphous, you know. Who would they go to? The president of the Alumni Association for Alumni Affairs? Alumni Association is not a, uh, in, not a totally integral part of the institution. It is a registered society like Wanawani School uh, and so on. So, so I think for Swami, when he gave shape to the alumni reunion and so on, we addressed these issues. We started a separate alumni charitable trust to receive money and hold it and so on. Uh, I was one of the four or five founding members, Professor Swami, myself, and some of them were still there, D. Chandrasekhar, K. K. Raman. They were not connected with the institute except as alumni, past students at that time. They still continue. Uh, but uh, when I completed my innings as deputy director and handed over charge to Prasanath, Within a month or so, I offered to say, I had my innings and I need to quit. So I resigned from the trust. Um, as dean, I was also, Professor Swami put me in charge of Vanavani School. I think the tradition continues now. Dean academic courses will be chairman of the Vanavani School and so on. I did convert the Vanavani School from a society to a trust. We had a lot of issues as a society with some 70 odd members. As a trust, it's only about four or five members and so on. Mm -hmm. That was a fairly uh, significant change. Mm -hmm. But now I think uh, there are several separate professors in charges who would uh, handle the Vanavani uh, yeah. issue, not the dean. Yeah, it's but probably the, changed. There now. is a professor in charge. Central school. When you retire, you will see three now other courses is to be in charge. I don't know whether it's changed. Yeah, how many things have changed? There is one uh, professor in charge. And uh, he is. So, uh, in, uh, when, I, when I was deputy director here, um, we need, uh, we were, you know, I think by that time the email and internet had become fairly, you know, sought after by many faculty. Their children used to be abroad, mm. so they used to they say, we want to send mail and so on. So we had the need, requirement to build up the backbone of network for the campus. Uh, most of the work was done by Professor Raghavan. We had a fairly large committee, Professor Kalyanakrishnan, Professor Balakrishnan from the Institute of Science. Uh, he's an aerospace professor, but he was in charge of the supercomputing education research center. 
so i participated in that and uh, uh, i managed to see how funds can be provided from our own regular budgets and so on we didn't want to take it as a separate proposal to the ministry and get funding because it was difficult to do that at that time um but once you go to ministry as a separate proposal for something you can at least say not less than 2 years mm. as really the amount money is large it used to it had to go to something called efc expenditure finance committee which is really outside the ministry of hrd <laughs> it's really in the ministry of finance and once you go there and professor ramchandran could do it <laughs> at that time but uh, so we did provide funds internally it was about uh, crore of rupees or so we built a backbone and uh, things happened very soon thereafter i think it was in 99 or so we established the backbone by 2002 3 i think all houses everything got connected hospitals everywhere you could uh, yeah um, we, just we, like we, electrical we utility you could yeah. put a computer and use and of course computer technology also was uh, becoming very affordable for individuals you know laptops and so on and so on. so I, i think the challenge was to keep pace with the technology derive the maximum for the purposes of our academic and research activities students and faculty i think that was a mission with which i was connected and it has been a great blessing oh that's wonderful wonderful really yeah. as a professor i i have i had very good students many of them still uh, remember me when i when i was there in um, i did go with professor natarajan for a couple of alumni meets in the valley and so on uh, we we visited about seven eight locations those early days now it has got very well structured and organized and after i handed over to uh, pros anand i i spent a little bit of time back as a professor in the department then i left the institute and moved to industry at that time i did make a visit private visit to the bay area and uh, so a few students said we like to have a get together and so on i said okay and i was surprised that there was something like 350 students that evening for they choose a friday evening so i went there and a uh, lot of people were there and iit mana which used to be the north american leg of alumni association it was based in houston texas i think the people who were handling it at that time they were also there so they asked me am i representing the institute so i had to tell them no i was very frank and blunt i am no longer don't put me in the chair of mr i18 in any manner whatsoever i've come here purely as a former student former professor and former role in administration of i18 i'm here one amongst you so they left me out of all ticklish questions and we had a great enjoyable <laughs> evening <laughs> i had some pictures of that maybe mohan can produce those pictures ah, see mohan then uh, when before he comes here i can get in touch with him ask and, him uh, ask him ask mohan uh, to... the meeting was in uh, some hotel in san jose san jose okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yeah. that was the last after that i didn't really have any I did come for an alumni reunion of computer science students here. The first batch I think uh, they passed in 1986. So the reunion would have been in 2001. One. Uh, uh, no, 2011. 2011. I think I did come for that and uh, you and remember Afterwards we used to yeah we you remember Saini? Yes, yes, Atul <laughs> Saini. Tulli. <laughs> as popularly known as uh, you remember all those oh, uh, yes, halabalu about journal <laughs> yeah so it's all as a member of faculty uh, were you invited to be a member of the board of directors of the software company yes uh, were you a member yeah i i was invited to be a member of the it task force of the government of tamil nadu the apex body to uh, promote and develop the mm. opportunity uh, in information technology uh, so i was also in the t- 
team that uh, made the initial plans and execution for Tidal Park. Uh, I was on the board of Tidal Park. And, uh, I am asking if there is no objection by IIT management to you to become a board member of the company? No. Uh, I, I think my first consultancy, you know, when the mainframe, I mentioned earlier that many outside organizations used to come and use it. So they did require some help in terms of uh, uh, adapting their code and adding some new functions and so on. So I used to get involved in some of them. I also used to encourage some of my colleagues to get involved in that. Uh, and, and at that time, I think the first one I took up was from BHEL, Tiruchi. They had a collaboration with uh, combustion engineering in Cincinnati or some place like that. And they had a lot of applications that were moved here. They wanted to adapt them to this and so on. It required quite a considerable amount of change. So we did write a consultancy project. And Professor Setanathan was the registrar at that time. And they, there used to be a lot of discussion as how the, how the money should be, mm. who should get what, and who will decide the distribution and so on. Uh, but it went through. Uh, and that model was highly restrictive, very highly restrictive because for something like uh, a few thousand rupees of consultancy, the concerned faculty and also the staff who has helped him would get probably something like 25% uh, for distribution, something like that. That's fair. All the department. So, what, why I ask you this question? If you are a retainer consultant, you are supposed to pay, straight away, you are supposed to 50% the ICSR. As a the balance, you have to pay the administration. Correct. And then, Tax. From that you pay the tax. Yeah. So forty percent tax. Yes. I will later cancel that. So the money the person who is consulting has the hardly fifty no, percent uh, yeah. So that's the company could offer shell. So why do you pay when you get That's so, true. That's, that's true. why I ask the board of directors Yeah. Uh, so, some of them are honorary uh, Board of directors used to be given only a sitting fee. Yeah. Retainer consultancy we did have, but later I, I think we changed it to instead of 50, 50, it became 70, 30, and that so on. Change, I'm told. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. No. Uh, and we also introduced another consultancy called RBIC, research based. Know. Industrial. See, consultancy used to have a connotation that was only routine thing like soil testing or UTM and so on. So that used to be, I mean, one cannot argue on the thinking behind it, but uh, is it really faculty level work <laughs> and so on. Staffs, they the testing and uh, I have one uh, lighter question. Yes, sir. Uh, was the IBM computer used at any time for uh, taking a film, commercial film? Yes, sir. It was actually used yeah. to as a nuclear reactor. Somebody came and took the film of the computer center and in the film it was shown as a nuclear reactor. <laughs> I I remember one occasion, but I don't know, who I don't know whether it is the same that you are referring to. Hmm? No, no. See, there and are then they took the film, and yeah. it was shown in the film. No, no. So there are two films uh, that were uh, made. Uh, one was uh, Vikram by Kamala Hassan. That was oh. done long back, and. Uh, in that, uh, he will use the computing facility here and then uh, the film was shot in the computer center and uh, his uh, lady love is the programmer and he would require some help and all those kind of things. So, several things were shot here. If you see the Vikram movie, uh, maybe, maybe that, it, was, it was probably when Professor Mahabala was the head of the computer yeah. center. I don't or remember. Or Kalyana Krishnan was ahead. 
possible. I don't know. Okay, yes. That, uh, might be I wrong. No, no. But then there is a recent movie, Yeram Arivu or Yeram Mani, then something like that. I don't remember that. That one was taken in biotech and our computer uh, center facility. There's one other, when Professor Swami was the director, Maniratnam came and for Roja, where there's something about breaking cryptography, it's about yeah. terrorism and so on. So he asked me, look, Maniratnam is coming. And uh, so Maniratnam came around 11 o'clock and he left at 1 o'clock. So I took him to the computer center, showed him everything. I think by that time, this uh, new IBM computer had been, a time sharing computer had been established, everything. And uh, he did take some pictures. I later asked the staff in the computer center whether it was actually used because said, if you see the movie, try to spot it and so on. But I didn't pursue it. Yeah, yeah, there was one scene in which he is trying to decode. So they asked the people to type the message and then that will appear. Yeah. I'm not so talking that is, that. Uh, I'm not talking because there is a lot of running, etc. to the center. So they show, I don't know it was a. Yeah, that wasn't Vikram. Oh, that I don't know. know. Yeah, Vikram is anyway, one such. Anyway. Another thing I want to know was when was the. I mean, I don't know the public or not, but the. Sierra Dakota, the space station launch. So at some point, you know, the entire thing is managed with computers, computer management. And most of the problem are involved in the computer management, the leadership. We had a factory officer also. Yeah. And then one of the satellites was sent up. So the entire, you know, last minute, the entire thing is taken over the computer. There's no manual thing involved. So the system was designed by the computer. Well, Professor Mahabala did, did some work for it. Yeah. Nineteen. I don't remember the name of the uh, collaborator that used to work here with the Atlantic Gate. Professor Mahabala did some work for it. Yeah. Professor Mahabala did some work for ISRO. I don't know whether it had to do with the launch. Uh, uh, but Sri Harikota, they had their own computer. Uh, about, I think it was called uh, Iris. Made from what? French, I don't know. It was a clone of IBM. They used that computer and uh, Professor Yohar Rao, when he was chairman of uh, Space Commission, I think, I think Rajiv Gandhi was a prime minister at the time, they had a failed mission from Sri Harikota, some launch. But later, when I had opportunity to spend some time with Professor Yohar Rao, he was our chairman, I used to go to Bangalore and so on. Uh, I learned by, inter by interaction that there's a lot of learning that came out of that mission. And that is the underpinning of success with almost no failures of almost all future missions of launch. So even though it failed, I think they used the opportunity to the hilt to learn how to address, you know, uh, non non uh, you know uh, good uh, perfect performing uh, launches and how to take care of possible failures and so on it did improve their uh, the entire back process got it got improved on that i think uh, that was very interesting mm. yes i think uh, you have uh, B.Tech electric, they, they, see, when I studied, the branch used to be assigned at the end of two years. It was a five-year program. So we all joined the institute. So at the end of two years, I had the option of joining any branch because I think those first two years, my academic uh, record was very good. You were a gold medalist. Yeah. yeah. But first two years also probably I was one among the top. But, you know, I... There were only about 100 students actually, 110 or something. So I was offered choice and I took, I think, heavy, heavy current, not light current. And uh, many of my classmates were uh, very keen on mechanical engineering. Uh, some were, some got metallurgy and Oprah Bakker is from metallurgy. Yeah. So, 
civil and so on. I think it used to be based on the first two year performance. But they, we used to give choice and the best in, in sequence and the best possible would be allotted, something like that. They did balance how many students would go into each branch and so on. And now I think we have a branch chain system that works. But basically they join in a particular branch right from day one and yeah. if there is some surplus or some number missing, they do the... They, there is a limited option to very move. Very limited option to cross branch. Yeah. How was the admission to IIT in your days? The, uh, the, there was no JE, right? So how did the you year know? I joined, there was no JE, yeah. but there was fairly intense competition. We were probably about 2000, 2000, 2000, there was an interview. Oh, I see. So there was an intense exam. Uh, I don't remember, no, there was no written exam if I'm right. It's only interview. I see. There was, uh, I think the year I joined, 1964, actually uh, 1959, I was eligible to apply. I had completed pre-university, but I looked at the age requirement. My grandfather actually helped me. And I was short by several months. He said, uh, <laughs> So I went to Lila College okay. for a year. I think I did BSc Physics or something. Then next year I applied and uh, was called for an interview. The interview had uh, what? Something like 15, including Professor Koch and others. There were German professors. Oh my God. Uh, Professor Sengupto was there, the director. It was in CLRI, one of the conference rooms. And uh, each one of us spent, and the interview went over what, uh, for th out of two, two, uh, th about 2,000 plus applications, they might have called several hundreds. The interview went on for, I don't several know, good, good three, four weeks. Mm. Uh, so they see only, you know, something like 30 students each day or something like that. It used to be generally in the afternoon. I see. And so I sat there with these 20 people. <laughs> <laughs> 15, 20 people shooting questions. Uh, you were suited there. Some one of, one of your classmates or somebody has written somewhere or told me, I don't remember. You told Dr. S.K. Srinivas to take your last question. Correct. You seem to have asked him a question. Something was doing a series or something. What happens when you continue the series when you seem to have a very interesting class? I don't remember that particular. I remember. Uh, no, I don't remember this uh, question. But it led to something like you said that something with computation, something like that. Because I read somewhere, I thought it was a place. It was one of your classes. Yeah, they. We were only one section, so we all. We, I, I think first year. There used to be workshop week and theory week, so we were two groups. Yeah, I know. But later, I think it became a single group or something. I see. Now, anyway, when did this uh, JE become kind of centralized? All the IITs uh, uh, coming together for the admission and all, because in your in the mode that you were in, it is obviously individualistic. <coughs> systems. But the interesting thing was that mm. when I joined this institute in the '65. It was a policy by the IIT Madras, I think other IITs probably also followed it, that they would allot seats across different states of the institute. So I remember my batch was very pan-Indian, very pan-Indian. We had students from Assam, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan. In fact, Prof. Chaudhary was the first warden when I joined the hostel. He mentioned, he probably also, you know, carried it out that in one week, we will have lunch and dinner, 14 meals in the hostel, as per the style of the 14 states of India. He probably implemented it, I'm not sure. I don't remember that well, but some of my he classmates... with such was. talents. Because, uh, it was truly pan-Indian, you know, we were... Um, we had what, uh, I might have had out of 110 or so in, in my class, not more than about 15 to 20 from 
Tamil, Tamil Nadu. Nadu. Okay. And that really helped us, you know, living together in the campus. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, otherwise, what exposure would have had for uh, our own country? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yes, yeah. And many yeah. of them used to speak in Hindi. Uh, some of them used to struggle a bit with Tamil and so on. <laughs> But, uh, very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. I have some questions. If you don't mind, we continue to be a couple more about the Tokyo and the Japan questions. Uh, it was a big jump from heavy courage to computer science. So it was a nascent subject, and you can't work for that. So, uh, what was the motivation? What really triggered the change is we had a, um, some kind of a seminar. Uh, course. I don't remember. Maybe it was part of some course, whatever it is. Every one of us were asked to give a seminar, study something, look it up and give it for about 20 minutes or so. I think there were stalwarts, Professor uh, VGK Murthy, Professor Venkat Rao and some young people like uh, Shankar Rao, Bapeshwar Rao uh, in electrical engineering. So they, they used to come and sit in the seminar. It was probably in the fourth year or something. So I had taken a topic to talk on digital logic. So I went and dug up something. Those days, you know, no net, nothing. Nothing. Only so I went to library. library and, uh, <laughs> I went to Gindi library. And I went to uh, AC College library. And picked up some stuff and made up a talk. And I had studied a course on logic in my pre-university. In Loyola College. So that, there was some passion in me for that. So I, when I gave this talk, I, as part of giving the talk and all these people sitting listening, I realized that um, discrete, uh, in any, any space with discrete structure and uh, logic applied to it, counting and so on, is, is a great potential. Uh, you know, in many respects. And none of the course I had here, except probably a smattering of graph theory and discrete mathematics. I can tell you, I heard about sets and set theory only when I was doing my PhD. Oh. <laughs> so that passion, so I had looked up and I said, okay, I read up a little bit, IIT Kanpur had this computer, which is there in MIT and they had this program and so on. So I had made up my mind by by the time I received the degree from uh, Professor M.C. Chagla here, and I'm going to go to Kanpur and study computers. <laughs> and I never look back. See, the, the network, the analog community network analyzer, you, if you have a mathematical problem, you can wire up different uh, black boxes uh, or different uh, components in that you can connect wires output of something is to go as input and so on and you could actually uh, mirror the solution of differential equation on the analog so it i think you can, output. You, can, uh, you can get visual outputs by feeding the output uh, signals to uh, equipment like oscilloscope or some plotter and so on. It used to be, uh, I don't know what they used it, used it for in Bell Labs, but uh, many power system studies, they used to use analog computers. Analog computers, uh, I think they still exist around a little bit, operational amplifier and stuff like that, yeah. So, Professor S.K. Srinivasan used to go so fast in the classes, you know. <laughs> he used to go very fast. So I used to really write uh, notes quite rapidly and later go and... Uh, <laughs> We used to, I think the talk amongst us was that his eyeglass power was my 22. Oh my God. Minus 2. Uh, I mean later, but now we have laser treatment and... Uh, Hello, over a certain age, uh, uh, Apo Kade. Apo Kade. Apo Kade. So now, I'm just comparing myself. So, I don't know.
ಅಶೋಕ್ ಅವ್ರು ರಿಟೈರ್ ಆಯ್ತಾರೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಚ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಈ ಕಾನ್ ಕಮ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬೆಡ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ he he is the uh, his passion was for networking you know mm-hmm. he always used to connect with people mechanical calculator give me some time let me think mm-hmm. about it. i don't know <laughs> i can get john krishna because he uh, used to have a mini heritage center in his lab <laughs> I ask uh, Professor Kalyana Krishna. Yeah. He used to have a disc when, when I joined here. Now you see the, now you don't see any disc at all. Oh. Even the floppy disks have gone. The yes. floppy disks were very small. But we had eight and a quarter uh, inch uh, disc. It is almost like uh, this size. Uh, oh that was the floppy disc. You have to insert into mm. the... ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ರೂಲ್ಸ್ವೆರಿ ಕಾಮನ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ತಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಮೈ ಬಿ ಟೇಕ್ ಟಚ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಐ ತಿಂಕ್ I mean, we were trained by uh, Wolfgang Scheer, for example, you know, in the drawing classes to read the slide rule, even a third decimal from the slide rule, <laughs> which is very tough. A lot of it is just imagination, you know. Precision, high precision reading. Yeah, go ahead. Since you are the president's work and winner, i i think uh, the, my batch they were many some were quite uh, serious and studious about study some were happy go lucky and uh, you know, shades in between yeah uh, but one thing they all used to uh, if you ask any of them i think they'll confirm this used to um, bank on is my notes <laughs> <laughs> it was so much in demand that you know i probably use my notes only i mean after the class and you no know, those days notebooks were expensive so we used to buy fairly simple stuff but i used to write meticulously uh, and uh, i probably used it less than 10% of the time myself is the class that so, you used more especially than around exam time we used to have all kinds of exams periodical what surprise periodical and so on sometimes surprise periodical somebody will get wind or they will say okay there's going to be a surprise period tomorrow it may not be there so the uh, what i had to do was leave my notes outside my window and i don't know where and how it goes but my only requirement is that by about 5:36 in the morning it should be back <laughs> <laughs> on the window <laughs> and i think all my friends were very helpful in that respect i used to have it back intact <laughs> no problem <laughs> and it varied you know some of them will uh, we didn't have xerox and so on some of them will write some parts of it uh, some of them will use it only for a certain part po- only some lectures and so on i remember some lectures by professor ramashastri in physics uh, i don't remember the topic i, I think uh, those i don't know 5 10 pages in my notebook for physics uh, is 
probably most heavily used ones. <laughs> <laughs> so nowadays, to tell you the way in which the technology has changed the so-called the surprise quiz, we also conduct the surprise quiz. But um, the surprise, many students who are uh, who will be absent and all or they may be coming a little late. But the surprise quiz has to be conducted on a sheet of paper that we bring in. So when the faculty comes in the corridor, is noticed with a bunch but of paper, uh, paper <laughs> immediately SMS will fly all over the class and then <laughs> everybody comes there for the so called the surprise quiz. <laughs> and uh, that is uh, today. Uh, so whereas. You never had these kind of luxuries. Uh, yeah. If it is a surprise, it is a surprise. Otherwise, anything can happen. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, how that SMS flies within a second and then people from all over, they suddenly come in a cycle and uh, be ready for the exam. No, I, I don't know which year IIT curriculum switched to the semester system. It probably happened uh, a uh, few years after I completed and left in 65. Uh, but when I was studying here all the five years, it was a year system. Three terms, first term, second term. With vacations in between. Yeah, there used to be a break after first term, a short break after second term, and then the final term and uh, summer vacation. The summer vacation I had only in the first and second year. After that, the summer vacations were uh, because of the acceleration. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, 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 of course. I mean, uh, so we said thank you. Of course, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.